you that you are uh, God, our provider. Thank you, Lord, that you always give us what we need. Father, this morning we, or during the week, whenever we gave of our monetary gifts, God, we, we give back a portion of what you've given us. And Father, I pray that you'd be able to use it to extend your kingdom here on earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. We're doing all right out there? Yeah. It's my privilege to, uh, to bring the Word of God this morning to start our Advent series. I'm super excited. <laughs> if you don't know, I'm someone who loves Christmas. Hey, John, our hearts are the same. <laughs> um, have you started decorating, John? Yeah? All done. Me too. The tree is up. The lights are up outside. The manger is up. And this year, we introduced Santa's sleigh to our front yard. So we're really excited. The kids are really excited. I'm training them well. <laughs> no, it's great to be here. And this, um, this Advent 2021, we wanted to look at the Christmas journey. What are some particular moments or signposts that led to the Savior being born? And what could we learn from them for our lives, for our journeys today? Now, I just need a few helpers, maybe uh, Nathan and Reese and Jun. Um, just on the front seat there is um, a little booklet. Can you just um, give one to everybody? So what they're handing out now is something that's been prepared for you to help you dive deeper into the word this Christmas. The only thing is, is that you have to write in it yourself. So, each week leading up into Christmas, we're going to talk about a particular signpost. And can you see the lovely signpost, uh, street sign here that Nathan has built? Well done, Nathan. Woodwork is not his specialty, but he gives it a go anyway. So, each week you'll be able to record the particular sign post that we follow. We'll follow this Christmas. And as we follow together the journey of Christmas, we invite you to record what God draws your attention to. What points from the Word of God would He be highlighting to you? Maybe you want to record the main points so you can read them later and ponder on them. But you will also notice that there's a diary there. There is a page, well, there is an entry for each day during Advent. And what we encourage you to do this season is to try something different. Maybe you're not a journaling type of person. But try something different this year. And each day, write down what God might be saying to you or showing you. Maybe you will notice a similar signpost to what we notice uh, in the Christmas journey. So here, we have our first signpost. Each week, we're going to add one or two to our street sign. And we've decided to go with just the names and hope that you'll remember what the application of it was. So our first signpost is Mary. Ooh. So what can we learn from this journey, the Christmas journey? The angel visits Mary. Turn with me in your Bibles to Luke 1. Luke 1, 26 to 38. And we're going to read it together. Luke 1, 26 to 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. 
Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come to you, come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. And then the angel left her. So in verse 26, we see that Luke mentions Elizabeth's pregnancy. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to visit Mary. Which implies... It was the same angel that, visit, that visited Elizabeth and Zechariah about their pregnancy of John the Baptist. Some scholars suggest that this helped to confirm for Mary that this was truly a miracle from God. Not only did Elizabeth see an angel, but she did also. Since the first promise of the Messiah in Genesis 3.15, the prophets and people have looked forward to the coming Messiah. Many, many prophecies were given. Now an angel appears unto Mary telling how she would be the mother of the Son of God, the Messiah. We, we notice then that Mary, it says that Mary is from Nazareth, a small town in Galilee. The people in Judah did not like the Jews from Galilee because of the contact that they had with the Gentiles. They especially despised the people from Nazareth. But God in his grace chose a girl from Nazareth in Galilee to be the mother of the promised Messiah. So what do we know about Mary? She was a Jewess of the tribe of Judah a descendant of David, a virgin. She was betrothed to a carpenter named Joseph, which means it's, it's a state much more binding among the Jews of that day than it is with our engagement. It was a solemn undertaking to marry so that divorce was necessary to break it. They were poor. Mary was likely to have been a teenager when the angel appeared to her. When you consider Gabriel's greeting, you can well understand why Mary was perplexed and afraid. Greetings, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Why would an angel come to greet her? In what way is she highly favored by God? How was God with her? Mary's response shows us, our, shows us her humility and honesty before God. She would never have expected to see an angel and receive special favors from heaven. There was nothing unique about her that such things should happen. All of this was a complete surprise to Mary. Gabriel then gave her the good news. She would become the mother of the promised Messiah, whom she would name Jesus. Note here that the angel confirmed both the humanity and deity of Jesus. As Mary's son, he would be human. And as a son of the highest, he would be the son of God. He would also be king, inherit David's throne and reign over Israel forever. We can see here in scripture that Mary's response to all of this was complete surrender and humility. 
Mary knew what was going to happen, but not how it would happen. Her question to the angel in verse 34 is not of unbelief, but faith. She believed the promise. Gabriel explained to her that the Holy Spirit would come upon her. Mary's womb would become the holy of holies for the Son of God. In verse 36, we see that the angel gave Mary a final word of encouragement. Don't worry, Mary. Elizabeth's pregnant too. Just to prove that with God, nothing is impossible. Mary's believing response was to surrender herself to God as his willing servant. She experienced the grace of God and believed the word of God, and therefore she could be used by the Spirit of God to accomplish the will of God. But by man's evaluation, Mary was perhaps the most unlikely person to become the mother of the Messiah. But this is how God works. What seems unlikely to man is accepted by God. Man does not see as God sees. God looks beyond the outward appearance. He sees the hidden ability and the surrender of the person, and he uses this person. Mary is an excellent example of dedication, of purity and humility. She had a love for God's word. She was obedient to the Lord. Because she loved God, she, were, she knew that it was God's will that she be the mother of Jesus. This caused her to praise the Lord. Knowing God's word and obeying it produces praise. So what can we learn from Mary's encounter with the angel? The first signpost on the Christmas journey can teach us on our journey many things. But I believe that God is highlighting to us today something specific. And it's this. Are you faced with an impossible task? Mary was given what would be seen in man's eye as an impossible task. How would she give birth to the Son of God? In our own journey, we will be faced with situations that seem impossible. You might be facing an impossible situation right now. I ask you, what is your response in the midst of it? Do you fall apart and struggle at this sight of the impossible task before you? Or is your response like that of Mary's? Surrender, faith, humility, and ultimately trust in her God. Is God asking you to do something for him that seems impossible? Is he asking you to surrender from something? Maybe you could record your response in your diary there to the things that you are facing at present. Write down each day what God might be asking you to surrender from. I think today with COVID-19 and all the restrictions and the different things that are changing within our world, it can feel like an impossible task. You've got some that don't agree with the vaccine. You've got some that completely agree with the vaccine and don't like, like those that don't agree with the vaccine. And then all the others in between. You've got uh, our government. Some agree with our government and some don't. And that very difficult situation is not just in our community, but it's in our churches as well. It's in families. There's division between families and churches and multiple situations, workplaces. It seems impossible. It seems impossible to, to find normal somewhere in the midst of this. 
But I ask you, what is your response? Maybe it needs to be surrender. Maybe it needs to be faith. Maybe it needs to be humility. Maybe it needs to be trust in your God who is in control. The second signpost, just quickly, is Elizabeth. Turn with me to Luke 1, 39. Luke 1, 39. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. So here we see that Mary goes to visit her relative Elizabeth. They wanted to rejoice together. The major theme here in this section of the journey is joy. We get to see three people rejoicing in the Lord. God carefully chose the parents of John the Baptist. God would use John to lead many people to Christ. Zacharias had prayed that he and Elizabeth would have a son, just as Abraham had prayed that he and Sarah would have a son. We see the joy of Elizabeth as Mary enters the house. Elizabeth hears her greeting and was filled with the Holy Spirit and was told by, by the Lord why, why Mary was there. The one word that filled Elizabeth's lips was blessed. The thing that Elizabeth is emphasized was Mary's faith. Blessed is she that believed. As it says in verse 45, because Mary believed the word of God, she experienced the power of God. We also see that the joy of the unborn son that Elizabeth carries, he was filled with the spirit and leapt in the womb. Even before his birth, birth, even before his birth John the Baptist rejoiced in Jesus Christ, just as he did during his earthly ministry. As John the Baptist, he would have the great privilege of introducing the Messiah to the Jewish nation. We see the joy of Mary further on in verses 46 to 56, where her joy compelled her to lift her voice in a hymn of praise. The fullness of the Spirit should lead to joyful praise in our lives, and so should the fullness of the Word. So what could be learnt from the signpost of Elizabeth? this Christmas journey. I believe God's saying to us, do you have overwhelming joy in your life at the moment that results in overwhelming praise to God? Do you have overwhelming joy in your life that results in overwhelming praise to God? In the midst of our lives, I believe that God will want us to experience his joy by the power of his spirit. Just as Elizabeth, John, and Mary experienced the joy of the Lord, we too have the opportunity to experience his joy. Maybe you think about your life, what you've done, where you have been, how you feel right now. Can you look back on your journey and see where you have experienced true joy? God would be wanting to say to us today that we need to look at the signpost of Elizabeth and know that the joy of the Lord is available for our journey too. The joy of the Lord is available for us too. So going back to your diary in front of you, can you record this week 
moments of joy that God gives you. I pray that God opens our eyes and our hearts this Christmas, this week, this Advent, that we would be able to look for different signposts that God would reveal to us. Remember Mary, she was faced with an impossible task. Are you faced with an impossible task? What would God be wanting to say to you? What needs to be your response in the midst of that? Do you come to God with faith and trust that he's the God of the impossible? That with him all things are possible? And two, Elizabeth. Ask for joy. Ask for joy every day, every moment. God is, by his grace, just so willingly wants to give you everything. If you need more joy in your life, ask God for it. And out of overwhelming joy, we will result in overwhelming praise to God. Let me pray with you. Lord, I thank you for your word, your living word that 2,000 plus years later, we can still see your hand, your revelation, your word for each one of us this day. Father, if we are facing impossible tasks like Mary, uh, not like Mary, but as Mary did, God, you, you want us to turn our face towards you. You want us to look to you for strength. You want us to look to you for guidance, for wisdom. Father, you want us to trust in you. That no matter what's going on around us, you are still God. Father, we also want to ask for more joy in our journeys. Just as Mary and Elizabeth and the baby in Elizabeth's tummy experienced your joy, overwhelming joy. Father God, may we experience that today too. Open our eyes to where you are working in our lives, to working around us, to the joy that is around us that we may be blinded to. God, may we experience a new touch of your joy. Maybe we've never experienced your joy at all. We've had happiness in our journey, but not true joy, joy of the Lord that just results in overwhelming praise to you. Just ask for more now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen.